Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the ego of the introverted types. I'm going to talk specifically how the introverted types express their ego in a way that's different from extroverted types. I discovered a really fascinating section in Carl Jung's work in which he talks about specifically how the introverted types express their ego in a way that's different from extroverts. If you're an introvert, I still recommend you watch my last video. Even though it's on the extrovert types, because your second function is extroverted. So my second function is extrovert intuition. I still found it to be applicable to a certain degree when I get unhealthy with extrovert intuition. And if you're an extrovert, I recommend you watching this video because introversion is your second function. So when you look at Carl Jung's description of each of the introverted types, he follows a very familiar pattern in his description when he's talking about their ego. So first thing is that he says introverts cause you to question why you should exist. So what that means is that introverted functions tend to be subjective. It always checks in with itself and there's nothing egotistic about that. However, when it's done to a certain kind of extreme, especially when the introvert is very tied to their primary function, that causes a depreciation of the external world. So since it's checking in with itself and devaluing the external world, the introvert starts to preemptively depreciate people and objects in its environment. The more the introvert starts to be divorced from the external world and turns inward towards the subject without referencing out to the external world. What Carl Jung writes in regards to introverted types is that the subject starts to become mythological. The stuff that the introvert starts to think about because it starts to be unrelated to the external world, it becomes so unrelatable that it has a mythological quality to it. And the introvert starts to become unable to discriminate between subjective perception and objective perception. So when the introvert starts to look out into the world, since they start to turn so much into the subject that they confuse the inner and outer world. And so they kind of project out their own thoughts and feelings into the world. So now I want to share with you a very interesting section in Carl Jung's work in which he specifically talks about how introverts develop their ego. What he sees is that introverts specifically, they tend to undervalue their own principle because their function is not valued in the world. As a result, they tend to take on the psychology of the oppressed when they get into an egotistic state. This is because they see the extrovert as not having issues and easy to conform to the times. And so the introvert feels like they must guard against the extroverted world because they're being oppressed by it. And when they do this to an extreme, the first function actually becomes very egotistic. Ironically, what Carl Jung sees is that the introvert tries to exaggerate the importance of the extroverted factor, and that's how they become egotistic. So egotism often arises due to a feeling of vulnerability. So if you feel inadequate inside, then you make it up by becoming egotistic. And that's what he says about introverts, because they feel oppressed by the world. If that's taken to an extreme, and they start to develop a lot of resentment, then what happens is that they start to become unconsciously egotistic about their primary introverted function. So Carl Jung describes two ways by which you could become egotistic. The first one applies to all of the personality types Types, and the second one applies specifically to the introverted type. So in this first process, all the types could take up an exaggerated importance of their primary function to the extent that they confuse their own individual person as their primary function. And then they repress the inferior function as a result and all the other functions. So this is the process of becoming egotistic with the primary function. However, when the inferior function gets repressed, it doesn't actually go away. You can't actually make anything in a psyche go away. So what happens is that the inferior function expresses itself unconsciously. So it starts to work behind the scenes and takes up an exaggerated importance. So the inferior function becomes egotistic at an unconscious level. Now the second process which applies to introverts goes like this. Because introverts live in a world where extroversion is valued, they consciously overvalue their inferior function because it is extroverted. As a result, they consciously devalue their own primary function. However, when they try to undermine their own primary function, they start to take up the psychology of the oppressed. 
And when that happens, their own primary function at an unconscious level starts to take up an exaggerated importance in order to make up for the feeling of being devalued. So when an introvert devalues their primary function, it's still going to find its own value, but in unconscious ways. So the primary function becomes unconsciously exaggerated. And that makes the primary function to be egotistic. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how each of the introvert types become egotistic. The introvert feeling type, introvert thinking type, introvert sensing type, and also the introvert intuiting type. Be sure to check out my Instagram page. I have a link to it down below in the description box. And also check out my website, leonsouttherapy.com. Thank you so much for watching.